Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your Royal Highness Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, founding patron of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences. Your Excellency Dr. Abdesalam Al Majali, we hope that he will uh, come very soon. Uh, fellows of the IAS, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's my pleasure and indeed a privilege to welcome you all this morning and to greet you and communicate my deep appreciation for your interest in this conference, which hopefully will outline the landscape of science and technology in Islamic countries. Since science, technology, and innovation is of paramount importance in driving socioeconomic development for our nations. For this trial to be effective, a total national SCI capacity trifecta should be achieved, namely a government commitment to providing SCI physical and soft in infrastructure, a vibrant ethical scientific community with enabled and efficient governance, and a private sector capable of willing to invest in product development. The efficacy of this CI ecosystem is dependent on the intricate and smooth interaction among all stakeholders in the state and a functional international outreach, an effort that should be culminated in a solid CI policy entailing an action plan to galvanize the efforts and delineate priorities. The Islamic World of Science is holding its 22nd conference to provide a platform for fruitful discussions and deliberations and enhance networking and exchange of the CI experience in OIC countries. Especially with regard to proper governance, partnership framework that accommodate all the stake stakeholders. We at the IAS are grateful and honored to His Royal Highness Prince Al Hassan bin Talal for patronage of both the Academy and this conference, and for his continuous interest and support of the Academy's activity. Thanks are also extended to the President of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, IAS patron, for his support and encouragement. I take this opportunity to extend appreciation and gratitude to all organizations, institutions that extend or pledge sponsorship for this conference. And these are Kuwait Foundation for Advancement of Science, Petra University, Cairo Amman Bank, the Inter-Islamic Network on Water Resources Development and Management, and the Higher Council for Science and Technology. Thanks are also extended to the speakers who did spare no effort to put forward their contributions in this scientific activity. The efforts of the local organizing committee, especially our president, Dr. Abdesalam Al Majali, our treasurer, Dr. Adnan Badran, and the staff of the IS are highly commended and appreciated. At last, this conference coincides with the inauguration of IAS headquarters building, a task that couldn't be done without the support from different institutions and dignitaries. On this occasion, I would like to thank the Arab Fund for Economic and Social Development, Kuwait, Mr. Auni Shakir, Saudi Arabia, Petro University, Jordan, Jordan Islamic Bank, Jordan, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamad Al Thani, Qatar, Hikma Pharmaceuticals, Jordan, Dr. Ahmed Saif Balhas, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait Foundation for Advancement of Sciences, KFAS, Kuwait, Dr. Adnan Jalli, Mr. Mahmoud Abu Shairi, Jordan, Mr. Ahmed Abu Ghazali, Jordan, Al Manasir Group, Jordan, IAS Fellows, Professors, Mohammed Azhar, Ahmed Azad, Adnan Badran, Noor Bat, Abdullah Dar, Shams al-Din Galadari, Kemakal Hanjilik, Munir Naifi, Munir Ostork, Sayyid Khaim, 
مثنى شنشل جاكي ينج خالد يوسف سليم يوسف Thank you. And now we will have Dr. Abdeslam Majali address to be delivered uh, by Dr. Adnan Badran until Dr. Abdeslam join us. Please, Dr. Adnan. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Abdullah. Your Royal Highness, Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, the founding patron of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences. Fellow members of the IAS, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear scientists, it is, it gives me that this note is on behalf of Dr. Majali, the president of the Academy, who will be joining us. Uh, probably uh, with little time. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you for attending this very important conference which deals with science, technology in the OIC countries. We are here to discuss the extent of the efforts in OIC countries in science, technology, and innovation, STI, a triangle that has accentuated by OIC summit held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2003. The importance of science, technology and innovation could not be overemphasized in securing sustainable development of the Ummah in its three dimensions of economic, social and environmental aspects. We in the Islamic world have to promote initiation and implementation of viable STI policy to safeguard our resources and secure, secure dignified livelihood for generations to come. The linkages and interaction within STI policy framework with regard to legal, organizational, and operational analysis are vital to ensure productive STI ecosystem. To be effective STI policy, should be looked upon as tools for satisfying immediate and future human needs with maintain, while maintaining harmony with historical, cultural, social, political, and religious heritage of the society. Among all factors that affect success of the STI policy is the political commitment to support and strengthen the nation's capacity and capability of STI components, including institutions, mandates, human resources, networking, participation, education, and R&D in areas with high priority and most needed in the society, like water, energy, food, and the environment. Research and technologies thus can be identified to tackle problems and innovative solutions for existing and anticipated needs <coughs> or priority in the current economic and health crisis we face. After uh, Corona, we have to look very seriously of the STI as something we need to deal with and interact with uh, for uh, the future of the OIC country. We are so fortunate in IAS to have the support and interest of our distinguished patrons, the President of Pakistan and His Royal Highness Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, whom I would like to thank for patronizing this conference. I would like to comment the efforts of the organization committee who did so much to materialize this activity Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we are honored to listen to a message from uh, His Excellency, the President of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and patron of the Islamic World Academy of Science to be delivered by Professor uh, Muhammad Iqbal Chaudhry, who is the director at the International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences 
and coordinator general of the Standing Committee on Scientific and Technological Cooperation, COMSTEC. Dr. Chaudhry, please. You are muted, Dr. Chaudhry. You are muted. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, patron, founding patron of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences, Excellencies, uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Salam Majali, Professor Dr. Adnan Badran, uh, our very dear brother and uh, some of the brightest minds of the Muslim world today. Uh, we, we, we are very pleased that uh, the, the World Academy, the Islamic World Academy of Sciences is regu regularly organizing these big events. This time because of the COVID-19, this event is virtual, but this also represents how technology can help us to interact. Uh, we at the Comstack, uh, which is the uh, founding body of the World Academy, the uh, Islamic World Academy of Sciences, take pride on the achievements of uh, IES. And we are very happy that uh, this uh, academy uh, has a great potential to serve as the brain of the Muslim world. And uh, the intellectual path of the Muslim world uh, need to be defined through uh, the leadership role of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences. Excellency, the uh, president of Pakistan, uh, Dr. Arif Aldi, is very pleased to send his message at this auspicious occasion. And uh, I read the message of uh, Excellency, the, Islamic, the president of Islamic Republic of Pakistan and, and patron of uh, the Islamic World Academy of Sciences. President says, I wish to congratulate the Islamic World Academy of Sciences on organizing 22nd International Science Conference in Amman and commend the Kingdom of Jordan for its patronage of this important event and this important organization. I would also like to welcome the distinguished fellows of the Islamic Academy of Sciences and other participants of the conference who have gathered to deliberate on the important theme of science, technology, and innovation landscape in the Islamic one country is an extremely pertinent topic in the current scenario. I would also like to appreciate the endeavors of Comstack in fostering collaboration, developing STI and human resource development in the OIC member states. President continued by saying humanity is faced with serious challenges of global dimension such as climate change, water shortage, food security, natural disaster, energy crisis, and pandemics of all kinds. The impact of these challenges is thought to be graver on the developing countries, including most of the OIC countries. Because of their weak economies, uh, lower level of resilience, insufficient expertise in science and technology, rapidly growing population, and dwindling natural resources. In this context, the importance of science and technology and innovation for the socioeconomic well being and political empowerment of the nation cannot be overemphasized. President uh, mentioned that Islamic scholars have made outstanding contribution to the knowledge and science. We must take all the necessary steps to revive our past glory in this realm. Foremost in this regard is the advancements in education and science. We have no dearth of talent and we are capable of devising credible strategies to tackle global challenges facing the Muslim world and the rest of the world. In the end, uh, President uh, would like to express his deep appreciation to uh, His Royal Highness Prince Al Hassan, the patron of IES, Professor Abdul Salam Majali, Professor Dr. Dan Badran and his colleagues and wish the 22nd Conference of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences all the success. Thank you. Thank you. And now we are highly honored to introduce the founding patron to address this gathering, His Royal Highness Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, who is a strong and passionate advocate of human rights, solidarity, dignity, and pluralism. 
is a driving force behind many initiatives, programs, and institutions at local, regional, international level. At the local and regional levels, His Royal Highness established the Higher Council for Science and Technology, the Royal Scientific Society, the Arab Thought Forum, the Royal Institute for Interfaith Studies and the West Asia North Africa Institute, WANA. Among his many international involvements and commitments are serving as co-chair of Independent Commission on International Humanitarian Issues, chairman of UN Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation, chairman of the High Level Forum for the Blue Peace in the Middle East Plan and member of the Commission on Legal Empowerment of the Poor. His Royal Highness is also honorary chair for the World Refugee and Migration Council. The Islamic World Academy of Science is honored by being patronized by His Royal Highness. Your Royal Highness, please. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الإنسان إنك كادح إلى ربك كدحا فملاقي صدق الله العظيم Our Lord Almighty addresses human beings and humanity He does not address solely Muslims he addresses those who strive to meet a better fate and a better future. And I feel that at this, uh, with these opening remarks, I should express my condolences over the death of uh, Chief Scientist uh, Mohsin Fakhrizadeh in uh, Iran, which we all read about. So I express my deepest condolences to all who knew him. I had the privilege of meeting years ago, over many years, Professor Abdus Salam, and when he was debilitated, Professor Abdus Salam, Muhammad Abdus Salam from Pakistan, when he was debilitated and lost his life, he also represented a huge loss to the Muslim Ummah and indeed to the world, founder as he was of the Third World Academy of Sciences. So with that moment of reflection, may I move on and say that this meeting comes in a sequence not only of OIC, but also of uh, the World Science Forum, which with the inspiration of my daughter, Princess Sumeya, was so successfully held in Jordan uh, only a few short years ago. Science, Ethics and Responsibility, 20 years after the 1999 World Conference on Science, the Declaration on Science and the Use of Scientific Knowledge, endorsed by the representatives of 155 governments in Budapest at the 1999 UNESCO World Conference of Science, was a pioneering document outlining a clear vision of science and society in the 21st century. I wonder why at this moment in time, we find it so difficult to understand the first word, if I may, in the title of your conference, ladies and gentlemen, landscape. Landscape to me of science and technology in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of the OIC means mapping. And mapping to me means the knowledge base that we all sh uh, seek and we all lack. We discover each, each other as we discovered in chattering to each other before we all came online as a conference that uh, I, I, and that fact in itself, I, I think, is unworthy of scientists. I think the time has come to speak about science for global well-being and not to discuss uh, the question of whether a Moroccan uh, or by origin has succeeded in a vaccine in the United States or a Pakistani by origin has succeeded in becoming the head of the Yale School of Global uh, Responsibility in Health, or to discuss the achievements of our Turkish friends 
because the East is in the West. The question of uh, this polarity between the achievements of the West and the achievements of the East reminds me of the terribly important, hugely important knowledge base that should track, map the uh, future of uh, uh, this uh, coming generation, the Z generation, by uh, taking the attitude of generations united, generations united, that we look for talent wherever it may be, and we look for it particularly in terms of the Muslim uh, diaspora and the Arab diaspora. I want to thank the speakers who we are going to uh, focus uh, in a minute, and I'm, I'm sure will be far more interesting than any of us uh, at this opening session. But I would particular would like to thank Marku Makula from Finland for participating in this uh, conference. His lifelong learning institute and his pedagogical approach and the direction of a center for continuing education reminds me of the importance of Generations United. International adult and continuing education is uh, I think uh, a, a step to take because our capital clearly is not our oil or our gas or our natural resources alone but it is an intra-independent, not interdependent, but intra-independent relationship that we have to build on the basis of respect for the other and the defining of commons, regional commons. And the regional commons to me seems to be the plethora of willing young minds who have to uh, be taken seriously in terms of what, President, uh, what uh, Professor Makula refers to as accelerating pedagogic reform and more coherence between policies in the field of education, research and innovation, i.e. a cluster uh, of uh, interdisciplinary uh, approaches. The same will apply to rationally the, to rationalize the funding landscape. So you have a sociological landscape, you have a funding landscape, and uh, indeed, some of us have done much, much better than others by buying science and technology off the shelf. But I assume that what we are trying to do is to develop in the context uh, of uh, the EC conclusions that new ideas and innovations are born from coming together of different kinds of knowledge and through the curiosity driven search for new knowledge. The pluralism among us in Asia, as with the pluralism among Europe's university and research systems should be considered to be an asset for the development of diverse approaches to a fully functioning knowledge triangle. I would like to say that in terms of funding that I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the views of uh, uh, Professor Makula in terms of Alto University and the Innovation Garden. And in that regard, I would like to bring to your attention the importance of FinTech and the importance of Zakat. One is uh, state of the art and the other is uh, a huge um, uh, engine of change that I think has to be driven by our cultural desire oh on the one side to perform a pillar of our faith by providing zakat, 2% of our income uh, for uh, useful purposes, uh, regional innovation among them. And indeed our mindset has to be considered not only in entrepreneurial terms, but also in terms of investment in human capital. I would like to thank uh, the uh, contribution of all of you, in particular, I want to remind Dr. Adnan Badran of the importance of the ASEAN experience. I have uh, headed delegations on many occasions over many years to uh, ASEAN countries. They, as you know, are different experiences, uh, represent Vietnam on the one side with its progressive um, uh, approach, and of course, Thailand with its uh, traditional monarchy, but what they have since 1967 is to be admired, and that is 
intra-independent recognition of the uh, identity of the other and the recognition of regional commons has brought them all this way. I was in uh, Morocco during the 1969 conference establishing this um, uh, OIC Comstec, but I want to say that that was unfortunately a, uh, a, a move in, in, in a hurry to Morocco to condemn the uh, burning of the member of the Aqsa Mosque. Look where we have come today and look at our situation uh, as it stands. Without practicing as we preach, I do not see how we can move forward and that is basically to look at knowledge in terms of knowledge clusters. I want to thank Amanil Beda from Kuwait, who uh, is participating, currently Deputy Director General for Support make make Programs and Functions at the Kuwait uh, Foundation. You in Kuwait started, I think, in 1977. We started in 1970s, 71 or 72. And I want to point out that the uh, cooperation between us, particularly in terms of diabetes, al ghudad al samma and al khalaya al are so important, uh, particularly in terms of touching our populace as it, as it is today. So the Diabetes Institute and support programs and functions remind me of the cluster of health, but not only as we look in the aftermath of COVID, uh, we have a meeting coming up in a few weeks time on mental health. The effect of mental on mental health of this uh, pandemic has been enormous. And I do think that the question of reconstructing our human capacity to cope and to live a dignified life brings dignity at the center of the construct. I, I, I believe strongly in one ism, and that is dignism. I believe strongly that at the, as we proceed, and I refer to um, Aisha Bamoun from Morocco, uh, that her work in international plant genetic resource is extremely important, both in terms of the Central and West Asia context and also the North Africa region. Therefore, you are cross-cutting, you are transboundary in your thinking. And I would want to feel that you feel completely at ease with uh, your correspondence in this uh, meeting to establish and uh, develop uh, institutional uh, cooperation. I don't know whether Shaukat Hamid Khan is here, but uh, I have to reveal to you that he was my uh, senior at Oxford, we became friends at Ox in Oxford years, and though we see each other rarely, we respect each other from a distance, I like to think. And his focus on nurturing the thinking mind, building a scientific culture, this mindset that has to change is so important as we look at all these people who walk around our streets, not even wearing a mask, and saying, well, this corona is really some kind of a myth. I know it's in the streets of Paris and London as well, but that doesn't make it any better. So nurturing the thinking mind, the National Management School, managing water issues, realizing that water, nutrition, food, agriculture represent a nexus which has to be taken seriously by human beings, citizens, building citizenship, through custodianship of these important uh, elements, al-istikhlaf is so important uh, if we are going to face the future. The security people talk to us about nuclear um, uh, threats and they talk to us about terrorist threats, but the biggest threat is the lack of ability to build our own house with our own resources, with our own intra-independence. In particular, I want to thank you, Shokat, for finally emphasizing the drivers of innovation and their impact on research and industry. And in that context, please uh, reach out to us and advise us at the Royal Scientific Society.
and I know my daughter should be listening with us somewhere, although I don't see her on the uh, display of the array of pictures in front of me. Malik Maza Fias, old Algerian born and uh, working, uh, of course, uh, in uh, the joint staff of uh, Ithemba Labs National Research Foundation of South Africa. Welcome to you, sir. You are a participant from another continent, and I'm so happy to uh, feel that uh, the African context in terms of South Africa uh, presents us with a fellow of the Islamic World Academy of Science and the African Academy of Science. This South-South uh, cooperation is increasingly important, particularly as we dread, I think all of us dread this Malthusian world in which we live, where we see people being killed everywhere. I want to remind you that 80% of the world's refugees, and I chair, I'm the honorary patron of the World Refugee and Migration Council, 80% of the world's refugees are Muslims. So, what are we, are we, are we hell's firewood or are we human beings to be treated with equal dignity? I will leave that question hanging and I don't want to get into politics, but I think it is through the policies that we try to develop within the multidisciplinary field, in your case of nanosciences and nanotechnology. Have we mapped this? Do we have a landscape of uh, scientific ad achievement to which we can refer. This is something that I do hope you can establish a partnership over during these conversations. And if there's anything I, as a layman, can do to help you, please let me know. I would like to uh, refer to uh, Zabta Khan Shinwari uh, and uh, to say that the concept of uh, the World Commission on the Ethics of Scientific Knowledge and Technology is hugely important to us. But I think that the Arab Charter of Ethics of Science and Technology in the Arab region is something that we should, uh, I know it, it, it is uh, still uh, early days, but I think that the structure of the charter, uh, as the world continues to witness sustained progress and change in all fields of science uh, is uh, important, particularly in the four sections, the ethics of production of science and technology, the ethics of transfer and localization of science and technology, and last but not least, the ethics of harnessing and using science and technology. But most important of all, I think, is the ethics of useful knowledge. That is to me, that is my those are my words, and I just want you to remember that the 17 SDGs do not include one word, refugee. None of them include one word, and 80% of the world's refugees are Muslim. With the introduction of universal zakat in this coming meeting in Malaysia, hopefully we can do something about this. But I would like to once again thank you all very much for your different fields of expertise and say intradependence, working together, responsibility, whether you're bigger or smaller or richer or poorer, doesn't matter. What is matter matters is that we recognize each other's identities and uh, contribute to complementarity. So I would like to conclude by uh, emphasizing strengthening global standards in research integrity as we did at the meeting of the Science Forum in Amman, research integrity, fulfillment of academic freedom, and the human right to science. And uh, once again, when I spoke, uh, spoke about FinTech and uh, Bitcoin, I'd like to, to know that 98% of our refugees have ATM cards. So we're using science of a sort. I think you will all accept that traditional paper is going to be the currency of the past. So why should we not effectively develop an interhuman relationship uh, with the emphasis on building a reassessment of science's re relationship with each other? It's not only 
through the media that we can make positive contributions, but it is also through understanding the conflicting or misleading news and information and giving people a solid base in knowledge, a knowledge base. In the 70s, it used to be data. And then in the 80s, it became informatics. And then now we're talking about industry four and uh, this rather mysterious industry four that doesn't apply to many of us, but we're talking about knowledge. We need to encourage human beings at all levels of achievement to produce, apply, and communicate science and to raise awareness of both the benefits and the ethical considerations in our joint efforts. Thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. And we may break or we continue. What, what do you think? I think uh, it's better to continue. To continue. Okay. <laughs> Anybody wants coffee, he can have coffee while we are continuing. Yeah. And let's see the Hassan. See the Hassan is looking. I'd like to just say one word. Uh, my name is Sayyad Kaim. I'm talking from Germany. Uh, Prince Hassan, you have done excellent talk. I'm a great admirer of your talks and your actions. And I would just like to mention one thing, the great reverence and the great respect which exists in Germany for you and for King Abdullah, especially in this region of Yulish, Aachen and Cologne, especially for the human rights and for the refugees which you are doing that is very much appreciated, not only among scientists, but among the whole people living in this area. King Abdullah was here a few years ago and he gave a lecture which was very well appreciated. So I just wanted to express my own feeling as well as the feeling of not only the Muslims here, but also some of the Christians with whom I have strong contacts here to, to tell you that we highly respect the talk, the words which you have said, the German constitution, as you know, the fundamental principle is the dignity of man. This is article number one. And Germany tries to follow this. There are many weaknesses, but at least we are trying. And also your thought on the intra-dependence. This is also our government is really interested in this. Maybe it is an exception at the moment that Germany is, Angela Merkel is trying to keep cooperation with all the nations and not only giving aid, but really on equal terms that people keep their respect and they try to cooperate us and we try to, to tunnel. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. I'm deeply grateful and deeply humbled by what you mentioned, a message from Germany. And I, I just want to point out that in two years time, God willing, we hope to host a German professor and her movement called From Dignity, from, forgive me, From Humiliation to Human Dignity. Yes. From Humiliation to Human Dignity, which actually has produced the Dignity University, which is online. The lady is called Professor Evelyn Lindner, um, and she is both a psychologist and a medical doctor. And I think that the, the, the um, division of the world into East and West, as Dominic Moisey says, the West is fearful and the East is humiliated. I think we're all fearful and humiliated in, the, in varying degrees if we do not attend to the common good, to the common cause. Vested interest is always stronger than private interest, uh, than public interest. I just want to say to you, sir, that I just wish that our German friends would realize that the debt that they owe the Second World War and its consequences is a debt to humanity. It is not a debt to politics. And this debt to humanity means that the Levant region, the Levant region has to be taken seriously as a complementary region, one to the Gulf with all its resources, oil and gas, and the other now to the Eastern Mediterranean with its resources, oil and gas. We should not be transcended by those who want to deal direct, directly with the oil and gas fields and build pipelines. We have to ask, does this infrastructure do something for the marginalized and the vulnerable? We have to move from a status-based approach 
to a vulnerability-based approach in dealing with our current crises. I cannot talk about the Yemen, I cannot talk about Libya, I cannot talk about many different situations without uh, talking in uh, terms of humanity. And I really hope and pray that the Europeans will develop a foreign policy soon, which focuses on building this uh, uh, Eurasian understanding of their responsibilities, the Eurafrican understanding of their responsibilities. How can we come together with advancing China on the one side and with the, the uh, Atlantic and Mediterranean on the other, if some of us have greater privileges in terms of lobbies and access. So I'm glad to hear that even in a pocket of Germany, that uh, some of us are heard and uh, understood, I hope. And uh, I, I again would conclude by saying that comprehension leads to understanding. God bless you. Thank you, sir. May I say something? Yeah, your permission. Uh, I'm very grateful to His Royal Highness <laughs> Mr. Hassan bin Talal for his very kind words. But and I am present. How could I miss this <laughs> gathering with you <laughs> heading it? <laughs> and uh, as usual, he's been philosophical about it. He's, he's one of the few people in the Muslim world who speak out their minds. And he doesn't hesitate to mince words. Uh, this yeah. meeting will certainly go a long way to what my dream is, that we don't know one another in the Muslim world. And this will bring us together. Maybe we can collaborate better, cooperate better, have an internal technology transfer, science transfer, exchange of scientists and so on. And this reminds me of Ibn Haytham, born in Basra, worked in Baghdad, then finally moved to Cairo. So that is the kind of thing which will happen in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sidi, we have some time. Uh, if you, we can accommodate some more questions, if you like. I'm at your service. I mean, whatever you. Thank wish. you. Thank you, yeah, no, Dr. Uh, Dr. Adnan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, your, your, your Royal Highness, I think uh, you have emphasized uh, very important uh, or basic things uh, about dignity, about knowledge and about ethics. Uh, what do you think, uh, Your Royal Highness, uh, since we are talking about OIC country and science, technology, and innovation in those countries, after COVID-19, what is your message? You said that we have a great power now, China on the East, and uh, across the Atlantic, we have United States, and we are the OIC country, a sandwich between them. Uh, where do we go, Your Royal Highness? Where do we go? Where do we, where is our priority of the OIC country after the lesson of COVID-19? Like COVID-19, where do we go? Where is our priority? And uh, how we overcome our differences and come together in concerted effort to address uh, nutrition, uh, food security, health security, etc. Martin Martin Heidegger characterized the inframing, the inframing or reduction of the natural world to a standing reserve of resources to a standing reserve of resources. Please project your ideas to 2021 and the end of November. Are we a standing reserve of resources and for whom and in what context? From the production and consumption of humankind as the crisis of modernity, we saw production and consumption both affected heavily by COVID. We have to thank COVID for bring us, bringing us together in terms of at least recognizing our interdependence. Heidegger, in speaking on te technology, underlined that the word, techno the, word, the word technology derives from the ancient Greek word techne, which is the name not only for the activities and skills of the craftsman, but also for the arts of the mind and the fine arts. 
I think that in terms of the Mediterranean region, if you were asking me, what we need many yesterdays ago is the creation of a center for humanities. Whether it is Greek or Turkish or Hebrew or Arabic or Latin, I think the time has come to recognize that this shared lake, what is referred to by Filippo Grandi, the High Commissioner for Refugees, as the Night Marian Ostrom, not the Marian Ostrom, is uh, the, the, a center of the world. If you go back to Halford Mackinder in 1908, he talks about the world island, which is approximating the seismic line that goes from Hormoz all the way up to uh, Finland and the, uh, the, the, the Baltics. I want to make it very clear that this separation between Russia, which after all is European as well as Asian, and after all Europe is part of Asia, China, which is advancing uh, along the Belt and Road, and our Pakistani friends know much better, faces a Schwerpunkt, what the Germans call the Schwerpunkt, or a point of leverage, an obstacle, a, a pivotal uh, situation in Afghanistan and Iran. And I think the question of Afghanistan and Iran has been addressed in military terms, but it has not yet been addressed in terms of uh, in terms of the, uh, ad, the, 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 the the human challenge, how can we consider post-war reconstruction and development if we have attained uh, stability uh, in in terms of uh, uh, post-war agreements? I, I think that one of the problems that we face is that we all know that in Afghanistan there are rare minerals. We all know that uh, there are, uh, of course, huge sources of wealth in terms of the uh, countries neighboring the border of, of Russia. We've seen the Armenian-Azeri conflict. But isn't it about time that our level of knowledge was raised to an understanding of what is going on in our world? When an American general, with all due respect to his responsibilities, says, I command the Central Asian Command and in that sense, countries neighboring Russia are part of my area of responsibility. Does that mean he's speaking on behalf of NATO or does it mean he's speaking on behalf of the United States? We have such a plethora of organizations, OSCE, uh, the, uh, the desire for security and confer conferences and conferencing have made all sorts of bilateral and multilateral relations. I think the time has now come to focus on the real issues. And whether with the Chinese or with the Europeans or the Americans or anyone else, with the Israelis for that matter, they are whatever they want to be every day of the week because they are the, fav the favorite son. But on the other hand, one has to ask if you want to be regional, what is your position on regional socio side? Sociology? leads to socio-side if it is in conflict. Society is in conflict. The lack of cultural affinity in the current ignoring of the Palestinians is socio-side, leads to socio-side. Ecology, in Arabic, ecology is the recognition of uh, nature and, 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 and man. <laughs> Please notice that many governments, most governments in our region do not have a public venue of knowledge and information to disseminate to people. Knowledge and information is the domain of the security services. But I'm not talking about security sensitive issues. I'm talking about the ecology. I'm talking about land ownership. I'm talking about the three G's, geology, geophysics, and geography. I'm talking about using the next two or three months, Dr. Badran, to develop a new mindset, which is what my friend Jokat mentioned just a, a few minutes ago. And lastly, I want to say that the greatest fear that I have is that our cogito side is, at, 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 uh, is almost there. Our cogens, our wisdom, our ability 
here to use our minds independently is now being restricted more and more. I've been called a maverick in the past because I like to think, I think for myself. Nobody tells me what to think or what to say. Thank you, Shokat, for that recognition. But the death of cogens, the cogitosphere, like the sociosphere and the ecosphere is the death of free will. So I would say that the time has come for a regional West Asian Levantine Citizens Assembly. As with the Helsinki Citizens Assembly, the time has come where all the hundreds and thousands of intelligent people are given a chance to speak out to the real issues and to analyze them. But what is going to happen, I think that uh, that is very clear. You have a maritime silk route and a terrestrial silk route, which has now extended the conflict from Hormuz into the horrors that we see uh, at the south of the Red Sea and in the region of the Suez Canal. The time has come to uh, preserve what is left. You know, when we presented the call for the humanitarian order, we called it winning the human race. Winning from what? Winning from time. We have no time left. So the, the, the sooner we feel the sense of urgency, the better it is, because what is, what are we going to inherit our children and future generations? That is the, the, the question. It's like wearing a mask. You don't wear a mask for your own health. You wear it for the health of others. As the Pope rightly said the other day, Pope Francis in, uh, uh, on, on the subject of Corona. But I shouldn't be speaking about medical issues with our um, founding doctor, Dr. Abdesalam Majali. Welcome to join us in this, uh, in, in this effort. Dr. Majali, I want to salute you and recognize your achievements over many, many years. He was a doctor in the 1948 war. Can you imagine? He won't admit it because it has something to do with his age, I believe. But as I said, what we need is generations united, generations united. In, uh, in facing uh, the pandemic and its consequences. We cannot afford what my dear friend Sayyid Muhammad Nagib al attas once described, the disenchantment of nature. We cannot be disenchanted with nature in the broadest possible terms. We have to recognize that all of us, with all our pluses and minuses, deserve a place under the sun. We don't need to develop this and that to join a new club. We need to understand the rules of the game and play them as they are expected of us in this middle ground between Eurasia, Africa, and uh, the European Atlantic world. We have something to say to each other and to complement each other with. And we can always say no if we have unity in our decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Your uh, Royal Highness. Just, uh, I, I want to say a few words, uh, Your Royal Highness. What you have given us today, I think you've said it all. Probably you don't have to speak anymore. You, you are the conference. <laughs> and you're addressing the conference. Yes. I think, I think you, you said everything uh, uh, we have in mind. And uh, really, uh, we appreciate your presence. We appreciate that you are with us all the time. Uh, Dr. Majali, when we were building this headquarter, he said that to me, you know, I wish we finish this as soon as we can so I can see his royal highness come after this COVID-19 and open our headquarter. And I hope your royal highness that you uh, really up, uh, agree to his vision, to his wish in the future after COVID, that you come and cut our the ribbon, cut the ribbon in opening our HQ, our I headquarters of you. the Islamic Academy of Sciences. Thank you, Dr. So uh, please. Well, if, if you may challenge. allow, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much indeed. I am a linguist. And I'll uh, reflect uh, from a linguistic point of view. I am an obsessed by His Royal Highness as a language engineer, as a knowledge engineer. 
what indeed we need in schools and also at universities, that those terms coined and implanted by His Royal Highness. And I'm one of the people in linguistics who's working on his uh, word coinage and term planning, that these terms related to innovation knowledge and uh, uh, promotion of uh, knowledge can be implanted in curriculum at university level. And I think uh, if we are going to practice what we preach and uh, what is uttered and said by His Royal Highness in terms of uh, discourse-wise, language-wise, term-wise, will enable innovation to be implanted because we are going to combine both the term and the concept and the intermarriage between the terms and the, the concepts and how to practice indeed in reality what has been uh, said by His Royal Highness. And again, I would like to uh, express my gratitude, my love and admiration for the wealth of knowledge in terminology at mm -hmm. all levels. What we are doing is we are Thank grieving so and grieving all the terms created by His Royal Highness, and these can help to uh, deeply rooting these terms in the mind Thank of our you, students, Thank you so much. the mind of I our scholars. To, I want to say to Dr. Fawaz, well, I know that you have just recovered from COVID, so you're probably more emotional than the rest of us. So thank you very much for all of that. And I'd like to recognize thank Dr. You, Adnan Shahab yes. Din, who is my old friend and partner in, in, in building the Royal Scientific Society years ago before you left us to go to Kuwait. But you didn't leave us because you came back to us in terms of uh, deepening institutional cooperation, which I hope uh, th this uh, nucleus of like-minded individuals and institutions can do. Thank you so much for coming. Well, I, uh, Your Royal Highness, uh, thank you very much for your kind word, and I wish the Academy very successful meeting. And I'm glad that my uh, colleague from CAFES is with you today. She will be with you, Dr. Amani. She will be a great job. Is she, is she prettier than you are? Uh, she is uh, not only prettier, but is, she is more intelligent. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, she must have some redeeming features. <laughs> well done. We look forward to meeting her. <laughs> Thank you all. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, from yes, Crown. Yes. Can I say more myself? You know, we are talking about the image. You know, we are talking about knowledge. We are talking about knowledge. You know, we want to have knowledge, but we are surrounded by tremendous amount of information all the time. But information is not knowledge. The, 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 the problem is how to convert information into knowledge. That's the problem. We have a tremendous amount of information around us everywhere, but, we, but the information is not knowledge. You have to convert information into knowledge. How to do it, that's the problem. Thank you very much. May I mention to you all, if I, with, with deep respect, that in Dakar, Ghana, Ghana, Dakar, Senegal, forgive me, but in, in Accra, Ghana, you, you have a, an African barometer of knowledge supported by MIT and by the University of Strathclyde. And many of the African countries are using this knowledge base to keep abreast of each other's achievements. I don't know that much about it, but I've spoken to the University of Strathclyde and I think it's a, it's a way to step forward. We have an Arab barometer, but I'm afraid that what we have there, as you said, is information rather than knowledge. And knowledge has to be irrefutable in terms of building trust with citizens. So I thank you for that remark.